You may wonder what a monetary ecosystem is. Well, imagine a community where many different currencies are flowing through it and circulating value to all of its members. Presently, our monetary system is a monopoly, and so we have a system out of balance. God said, let there be light. The bank said, let there be money. So money is made out of nothing, and recently a lot of light has been shown on this, how banks make money, and it's waking us up to the fact that there are other ways to do it, and that we ourselves are the source of value. Money is a human agreement. By understanding how we hold money, we literally hold in our hands the power to change the world. To understand this simple fact is to take conscious control of where we want to go from here. Where do we want to go from here? Our present money is an agreement to be in debt to the banking system. What agreements would we make in a monetary ecology? Well, one would be transparency, so our exchanges could be based in trust. Another would be that money exists for the common good, for the public good. We've heard a thousand times we can't solve problems at the same level at which we've created them, and so we work systemically to change things, but with the same monetary system. I believe that complementary currencies could help us change systems profoundly. We've inherited from our ancestors a consciousness of separation and of survival. And thank God they survived. We're here. But it's time that we shift from our need to control that which we think is separate from us and learn that really we exist in a universe of interrelationship. We're learning that if we're going to survive, we have to survive together and collaborate and cooperate and yes, there is some competition necessary, and we need dollars, but we also need complementary currencies so that our cities can provide social and environmental programs without taxes and debt. We're not arguing that the present monetary system is bad. We're just arguing that it's profoundly unhealthy. The reason being that it promotes a concentration of power to itself at the expense of relationships. So if true wealth is as emulated by nature, it is really a balance of these two things. So how do you create a monetary ecology? Well, we started with this event about a month ago called Who Creates Money? And one of the parts of this process was asking people to tell us what goods or services they wish were more affordable and what goods and services they like to offer. And these are really unused resources and unmet needs. And these are the results of that, of that event. Uh, the top three that we wish were more affordable in Santa Barbara are healthcare, housing, and food. And we have a wide array of locally offered resources that people love, love to give. So once you know what your community's unused resources and unmet needs are, the next step is to get together and co-create, uh, design, and implement complementary currencies to serve those needs. And so this is a picture that, uh, from uh, an event that Faye and I attended in Zurich. Uh, from a wide variety of uh, university students to design and begin implementing complementary currencies. We listened and learned principles of, of currency design. We played games in euros and dollars and discovered our own fears and greed. And we also played a game called poly money, in which we experienced the excitement and energy when new currencies came circulating alongside um, dollars and euros. And in small groups of interest, we learned how to link unmet needs with underused resources. And we designed currencies for a housing co-op, for sustainable agriculture in Madagascar, for uh, linking youth and elders in Singapore. It was very exciting. Now, communities create currencies, and currencies create community. We invite you to join our community forum so that we together can determine what our unmet needs and underutilized resources are. It's how we're going to discover how we can move forward together. So the, one piece of good news here is that complementary currencies do exist now in various parts of the world and are producing some extraordinary results. And these are just a few examples, not to get into the details, you can actually uh, study these more on our website. 
But a common trait of each of these examples is that they begin with a set of unused or underused resources and unmet needs in a particular community. And a currency is designed that catalyzes those unused resources and unmet needs to come together to produce some desirable effect. And the currencies are designed either by uh, you know, a grassroots uh, citizen group or a nonprofit, or potentially, in this case, a uh, consortium of businesses wanting their own mutual liquidity independent of the banking system. Breathing space. We watched, we watched the caterpillars in our backyard eat all the leaves on the milkweed and it looked disastrous. And then we watched the hard, hard work of transformation. And now we're waiting for the butterflies. Santa Barbara can be the first butterfly, the first monetary ecology to model this for the world. We want to express our great appreciation for Bernard Leotard and Jackie Dunn, who've done monumental work in this field. Fantastic book. Get it at the Book Den, Eric, our local bookseller. And they're very connected and partnering with us in the monetary ecology here. And our real agenda in being here, in case you hadn't guessed, is to recruit each of you into this process. Um, that's our website. Uh, if you don't want to remember that, we have, we have cards with us, of course. And at the very least, you can spend some more time really deeply understanding what monetary ecology is and how the present monetary system relates to that and to engage in this process. Thank you.